Hey guys, welcome back to the Buzz Weaver channel. And in our top stories today, unsurprisingly, the massive interview that took place on X yesterday with Elon Musk and Donald Trump. From the Daily Wire, Trump Musk X interview. What to know if you missed it? I don't know if you guys were uh, able to listen in on it, but uh, it obviously had uh, about 45 minutes before it actually started because of uh, a DDoS attack. And we'll get into that in just a moment. Former President Donald Trump and ex-owner Elon Musk discussed a range of issues for two hours on Musk's social media platform on Monday night, drawing over 1 million listeners. It was about 1.3 million, roughly, which is massive. After, initially cra after initial crashing due to what Musk describes as a mass DDoS attack, the virtual fireside chat finally started around 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, about 30 minutes after the discussion was scheduled to begin. Musk and the Republican presidential nominee talked about the economy, immigration, the attempted assassination of Trump, and the Democrats switching out Joe Biden for Kamala Harris, of course. Just basically the topics that you would expect. Trump uh, described July uh, 13th assassination attempt. And then, of course, you see the different posts here from the Daily Wire where you could where you could access it. I think you can still listen to it now in recording. Trump hammers home message on economy and then uh, immigration was a big topic. Uh, and then uh, Trump blasts Harris for avoiding interviews. Of course, uh, she's a very she's a very um, scripted individual. She's very vacuous. In my opinion, she's vacuous and uninspiring. And then, of course, when she goes off topic or off message, she just kind of rambles and goes in circles and then cackles. And then uh, here we have uh, uh, the, the Democratic coup, which we talked about yesterday in, in a video this weekend on Saturday, I believe, I released that video on uh, Nancy Pelosi talking to Leslie Stahl, of six, uh, well, from 60 Minutes, but actually it was on uh, CBS this morning, Sunday morning. And uh, basically uh, her gloating about having removed Joe Biden. We can do this the easy way or we can do this the hard way. It was really, really, really absurd. So from Elon, we tested the system with 8 million concurrent listeners earlier today. So then there appears to be a massive DDoS attack on X working on shutting it down. Worst case, we will proceed with a smaller number of live listeners and post the conversation later. But they were able to go through. But if you guys are wondering what a DDoS is, it is a distributed denial of service attack is designed to force a website, computer, or online service offline. This is accomplished by flooding the target with many requests, consuming its capacity, and rendering it unable to respond to legitimate requests. So basically very similar to a busy signal. If you guys remember using a landline telephone and calling somewhere and getting an actual busy signal. Now, it is not unsurprising because of the number of people that were watching yesterday, or I should say listening in. But the point being, as we've always said here on the Buzzweaver channel, the left and the establishment are concerned about influence. They're concerned about people's ability to talk about topics that the establishment and the left do not talk about. In other words, they are afraid of people with influence because people that are listening might side with them. In other words, side with the, the individuals who are not part of the establishment uniparty. So individuals that are influential like Elon Musk and, of course, Donald Trump, they always want to try to shut these people down. But because Elon now owns Twitter, or X as he calls it, this is a big problem for them. And so they have to attack him. They are attacking him with lawfare also as well. But as you can see here, he's outlining all of the negative press headlines that came out today. <clears throat> Many of them, uh, USA Today, I can see, Fox News even, Newsweek, The Guardian, just a plethora of different uh, news agencies here that uh, decided that they would take an opportunity to kick the dog, as I like to say. Uh, but they don't understand how the system works either, how social media and the Internet works, as we saw in that one clip of Kamala Harris trying to explain the cloud, where she failed miserably trying to do so. And speaking of Kamala Harris, the Harris campaign mocks Trump, Musk, as self-obsessed self -obsessed rich guys who cannot run a live stream. And, of course, this message of self-obsessed rich guys, <laughs> excuse me, is echoed across all of mainstream media today. Kamala Harris campaign mocks how much Donald Trump and Elon Musk suck at the Internet, which is absurd because uh, it was clearly explained what happened with the DDoS. Now, you might be saying, oh, DDoS. No, DDoS are actually quite common. As a gamer, we experience this from time to time when a group of individuals get angry or upset about a new patch or a new upload or something that the, that the developers or designers of the game, publishers are not doing. 
then they may get together and and do a DDoS attack against that particular game, making it difficult for people to be able to play. So, yeah, DDoS is something we experience as gamers is, is very common. So, to the left, of course, they probably don't experience this or know very much about it. So, of course, they have to mock it. And then we see here Team Trump responds with a brutal roast of phony Harris uh Obviously, Kamala Harris, after her campaign, throws tantrum over epic Elon Musk interview, of course. Trump spokesman erupts in profanity after Harris campaign mocks uh, Musk event. But, of course, here they are borrowing the same tagline, self-obsessed rich guys. So it's not uncommon that they would be concerned about all this because, as I've said, as we say here on the Buzzweaver channel, it's all about influence, right? It's all about who you can convince of your side or your ideology, your philosophy, and your worldview is simply put, really, just to kind of bring it down to who's going to side with you. And, of course, the left wants everyone siding with them. And then, of course, they seize power and then take control, and then they tell you what opinions and thoughts you should have as opposed to your own individual decision-making process and your own personal agency. And it's interesting because if they're talking about DDoS or mocking it, they don't seem to be talking very much about the FBI investigation after Trump campaign says it was hacked by Iran. Now, the reason they say that is because Microsoft said that it was. It says here, August the 12th, the U.S. FBI said on Monday it was investigating after Donald Trump's presidential campaign said its Internet communications were hacked and the campaign blamed the Iranian government. The former president said on Saturday that Microsoft had informed his campaign that Iran had hacked one of its websites. Trump said Iran was only able to get publicly available information. So they weren't able to get anything uh, secret, or, well, secretive, but uh, personal uh, correspondences between individual people. The FBI is also investigating an alleged hack targeted target advisors to the campaign of President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris, the Washington Post reported on Monday. So they've experienced some of that with uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris as well. But uh, it's very interesting because here in Georgia, where we had issues with our own campaign, you see here someone tried canceling Marjorie Taylor Greene and Brad Raffensperger, our Secretary of State's voter registration. So here in Atlanta, they had an online uh, portal made up, made so people could cancel. So as you see here, Atlanta, just days after Georgia launched a new online portal for people to cancel their voter registration, reports show that there were multiple attempts to use it against Georgia state officials. Those officials include Brad Roffensberger, the U.S. rep or the secretary of state here, or U.S. rep Marjorie Taylor Greene, of course, according to ProPublica. So we have all this activity going on, and as we said, it's going to be a very wild 2024. And, of course, it has been a very wild 2024. So we have the FBI investigating a potential hack from Iran. Of course, you might recall that they also said that Iran was potentially involved in an attempted assassination against the president. Then Harris going off on what she was saying about that, even though she couldn't explain how the cloud service worked. And Elon here, of course, uh, he's also being attacked. And so he just wanted to show that uh, the collection, the collective establishment uniparty, as we call it here on the BuzzFeeber channel, all working together in a coordinated effort in one way or another, either positive or negative, uh, you know, so we'll have to see what these are. But he says they're all negative headlines, and I believe that, or it is said here by the uh, autism capital that they are. So, um, and then, of course, uh, DDoS. And uh, you guys will have to let me know down in the comments, were you able to listen in on the interview? I think it was more, more, yeah, as I say, more of a fireside chat, more of a conversation going on. Look at that, 43 million views for the DDoS. But, uh, yeah, very interesting, very interesting. It was, uh, it was very long, two hours exactly, or roughly about around two hours. Uh, that doesn't include the downtime, of course. Uh, for all that to go on, but I'd like to know if you guys were able to hear that. But of course, I want to thank all you guys across all new tech. That would be Rumble, BitChute, and Odyssey for your guys' continued support on those particular platforms. Thank you very much. And of course, everyone here on YouTube for your guys' continued support. The likes, the shares, and the comments all help out the channel. And of course, below the video, you can find the various social media links that I belong to, to include Twitter and or X that I am on, along with all the others, Instagram, of course. And uh, thank you guys. Appearing there on the screen, that would be the channel icon. For those of you watching on YouTube, you can click on that to subscribe to the channel as well as to select notifications. That way you know when there's content here on the channel. And I'll see all you guys in the next video.